Welcome. This is Let's Talk, getting to the root causes of the important issues of the day. This on the air community forum believes that your voice matters and welcomes all thoughts and views without judgment. Please join today's conversation by calling 415 663 8492 or tweet us at Let's Talk on KWMR. And what's the other phone number they can call? It's 415-663. Ooh, going off the dial there. 415-663-8317. And, uh, yes, when you call in and hear the phone ring, you'll hear a little buzzy noise as I put you in the system. Please hang on until you hear me say, you're on the air. And then give us your first name, turn down your radio, and please, as always, watch watch your language. Keep it clean, people. Keep it clean. So today, we're talking about uh, a... Radical Islam. Radical Islamism. And uh, Stephen inspired this somehow. Um, What what inspired you to inspire us to talk about this today? I don't know, really. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's it's in the news every day. Uh, And there's a lot about uh, Muslims in the news. Mm -hmm. Uh, There's a lot of... I mean, it's generally... Uh, there's also uh, uh, extremes on both sides that people are taking. I thought on that both was sides, a, we've heard that. There before. are some good oh. people. There are some <laughs> good, good people, people and bad people on both there sides. There are some good people there that are member of ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> some good people. The good ISIS. ISIS. I thought it was. Haven't you ever been at a social gathering in West Berlin and thought, "Where's Al Qaeda when you need them?" Uh, Ooh, no, that wasn't. <laughs> so, um, but I've been uh, studying Obama and now, and that I know that he. Is the root cause of ISIS? Oh, Obama was. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Of course he, he was started. The founder member of he ISIS. He started it. Uh, as I recall. Trump is this saying fake news? Do we, do <laughs> we need what's a, happening? Do we need a special disclaimer for uh, Miss Hakanos uh, for this show? Um, yes, poor ISIS Hakanos, uh, my wonderful neighbor in Marshall, a lovely person who did the mural at the Side Street Cafe. Oh. Lovely artist, lovely person. Name is ISIS, uh, and it's like it's like having your birthday on nine eleven, really, like Barry Smith. I my birthday. day before, day before <laughs> I woke up the next day. My sister was in the Pentagon at the time. Oh, Very interesting day. My goodness. You there know, you I want I want to just uh, mention something. There's an article, a 2015 article in the Atlantic. Uh, Grammy Wood uh, wrote it, and it says what ISIS really wants. Ah. And I would say if you want to really get a, an Can overview, pressy. Well, you know, I uh, I just want to pick one paragraph out of it that I think that uh, it can lead us into a discussion. It says, we can gather that their state rejects peace as a matter of principle, that it hungers for genocide, that its religious views make it const- constitutionally incapable of certain types of change, even if that change might ensure its survival, and that it considers itself a harbinger of and headlight player in the imminent end of the world. This is the Republican Party. The Who is this about? Party of the world. Oh, yes. Um, well, you know, the funny thing, I did a little reading about uh, Islamism before the show. I should hmm. point out, 663-8492. Yes, I see you, Emmanuel. We'll go back outside and call in. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, is, is that, you know, if you look at just the bare description of what Islamism is, the, the, uh, there's a, uh, in British law there's a description which is... Um, uh, that it opposes democracy, the rule of mm. law, individual liberty, and mutual respect and tolerance for different faiths and beliefs. How many different sectors in American uh, uh, sort of politics Society, and discourse yeah. would, would fit the same description? Exactly. Um, mm. And so it's it's funny that we, we focus so much on them and also how little Islamic territory there is apparently in the world, you know, or in the United States at least. Yes, if you Certainly look at charts, United you'll States. find out that... Uh, it's actually comparatively small. No, yeah. mm-hmm. yeah, but it but it's, looms large in our imagination. Well, it's crea- they they're creating par. This is exactly what uh, what the extremists want to do, isn't it? They want to create paranoia in this country for sure. And and it was successful. Osama bin Laden was a yeah. complete success. Yes, <laughs> and, and yeah. the backlash that comes with it. Well, that was it. I mean, we against spent, all Muslims, right? No, no. I, I, that was the point. It was the concept of the near enemy and the far enemy, and in this uh, 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 huge boom in uh, sort of Islamic extremism, extremism in the eighties and nineties, they were trying to take over countries in the Middle East to apo- uh, impose their uh, views. They didn't have uh, much success with it, and so they thought, ah, we'll attack. 
attack the far enemy. The real source hmm. of the misery of the Muslim world is uh, the United States. And so this is what engendered, you know, uh, Osama bin Laden's vision of who we need, really need to attack. Hmm. Um, but it was because of their failure domestically. Actually, in the Middle East, these ideas did not obtain. They were considered... You know, marginal, violent. Too extreme, yeah. Too extreme. Nobody, um, well, l most people do not want to live under that kind of extreme uh, rule, right? Yeah, well, and the revolution fails most people there. people want freedom and happiness, which we are spreading throughout the world. <laughs> and, uh, we've certainly been bringing freedom and happiness to the Middle East for... Uh, hundred years, years now. years now. Many, many years. The Russians before us. Do, uh, we, uh, do we take some blame for uh, ISIS ooh. and Al-Qaeda? I wish I knew more about it, but definitely, um, you know, playing with the idea of fear. You know, fear is a huge marketing tool, and politics definitely uh, is a heavy marketer. Uh, especially in, in the use of fear and it rationalizing, gets, yeah. validating a huge military, you know, mm. is, is a big part of it. Well, I think also, mm. I mean, this is a, a Who culture. Who are we fighting exactly? Well, a culture right? for 40 years now that doesn't seem to have any dreams, doesn't seem to have an idea of freedom, doesn't seem to have an idea of a better world. And once you have no beliefs that are positive beliefs, all the fear becomes, uh, you, you become utterly manipulable. And that's certainly the story of the United States over the last 50 years is how, and this is Norman Solomon's great topic. I mean, this is what he's talking about, what happened in the last 50 years here, another West Marin person. But I know a prominent fellow in West Marin, uh, one of our local greats, and I won't mention this person because uh, I don't think it'd be fair. But after 9-11, he sent out an email to all of his great and good friends saying, didn't we see this coming? And he was shouted down, howled at. We had one hmm. member of Congress that had any uh, principle, and that was Barbara Lee, uh, mm -hmm. the one member of the House of Representatives to vote against uh, war. Uh, and uh, she was howled at in Congress, shouted down. And Treason. It was a, a tremendously, Traitor. Yeah, a tremendously brave act. And so Barbara Lee, her other ideas, you could give or take, but or you know, take or leave. But um, certainly in that moment, there's one American you could be proud of. And here in the Bay Area. So right. see me being positive. 663-8492. That's such a, such a lovely side of you, As girls. usual. <laughs> As usual. Uh, I, 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 this really, I mean, this is just a sort of a byproduct of my searching about about uh, jihadism and all that. Uh, here's this woman, uh, um, English woman? Uh, yes, I think so. I'm not sure. Yeah, she was Oxford. Um, she, uh, she studies jihadist poetry. In fact, she's a jihadist poetry critic. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and apparently uh, poetry is a, is a, is a the favorite form, apart from Twitter and And what do you else. do for a living? Mm -hmm. They, uh, they, they write in poetry. It's inspiring. It's, uh, you know, I mean, Arabic language has been a poetic language ever since it began. They're always out there, sitting out there around the fires, composing and writing poems about the thing. stars. Sounds and like Inverness. And, uh, and there, uh, she, there's so much of it. She actually lives in Yemen. Hope she's okay, because okay. we're... You know, we're financing the the humanitarian, the Sunni Saudi Arabia uh, intern assigned squabbles between Sunni and Shia over there, yep. um, helping them bomb, giving them the bombs. N to not bomb to mention, them. not to mention, there is this Shia Sunni uh, dichotomy uh, in ISIS. Uh, well, that's interesting because mm -hmm. I think of them as being mostly Sunni. So one of the things, so this is the way American ethics and morality work. David Petraeus is a general in the military. He was shamed and run out of his job and forced to teach at USC, which he's really a, is worse in prison. He had a bad... Uh, oh, the, um, <laughs> uh, he, well, he, because he had an affair with his biographer. But what he was accused of quite prominently in The Guardian, the Manchester Guardian in, in the United Kingdom, um, was uh, of uh, setting up Shia death squads because he'd been in El Salvador in the 80s with a lot of other nice Americans, uh, setting up uh, Shia death squads uh, in northern Iraq who attacked all these Sunnis and, and helped to create the conditions in which you would have an ISIS. Now, that was on the front page of The Guardian. It was not really covered in the United States at all, as mm. far as I can tell. And all everybody knows is that he had an affair with his bag. They like to jog together. Well, what a isn't tale. that interesting, though? You can kill thousands of people, but if you... Uh, cheat on your wife. If you cheat on your you wife, that's, that's it. It's also a terrible 
whole thing. But that's what Stalin said to his wife. Yes, you know, that's it's another like you marketing tool, them. sex. Another yeah. marketing tool, yeah. exactly. And another way in this country to bring the downfall of politicians, which is a very odd thing for her. in 2017. Um, yeah. An email from Richard Kirschman. Uh, by the way, you can tweet us at, at Let's Talk on KWMR. I have uh, my secondary tweet box here, so, you know. Is that what you call me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, an, an email that came in from Richard Kirschman yesterday, and good atheist that he is. Belief in gods underlies it all. There are no atheistic jihads. Well... <laughs> there you know, is that. Speaking I, as myself as a confirmed atheist, uh, all, I, well, I had to deal with this argument last all night. All religion, young Galen creates would. extremism. What do you? Th- what word comes up? Word association when you hear secular? I always think of secular strife or secular. Well, I, I, this came up Opposition. last night. It's the counter argument, which we'll have to deal with. I was at the the uh, uh, birthday party of young Galen Woodruff. Happy birthday, Galen, yeah. Marshall, California, uh, and uh, and he he has the the classic counter argument, which is. Uh, well, look at Mao, look at Stalin, look at all these, quote, atheists, and uh, look at Hitler, True. blah, 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 blah. Didn't they kill more people than people who believe in God? Hmm. And I, I don't think what you see in that comparison is it really doesn't tell you very much. What you learn is those comparisons are kind of odious. They don't make any sense. And, uh, y- you know, you have to take the situation as it is. I think, yeah, I think religion can inspire people to do awful things. You know, I, I think there's something uh, that not counting for. To be an atheist is to stake out a particular spot. Uh, there's also indifference. Agnostic. Or just, you know, it's don't, all don't foolish. Hmm. Let's not even talk about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, here's... Well, except that that is the basis, supposedly, for this... Uh, Muslim extremism. We're only talking about Muslim extremism today, not Christian extremism, although that's well, that certainly had its time. That brings up an interesting uh, fact, that because as uh, ISIS is uh, territorial on the run, uh, the question is, will the old animosities reemerge, and is this just the beginning of a whole new conflict? Uh, just exchanging one for another. Well, I think this conflict has been going on. Mm. The first British, British, wasn't us, uh, uh, <laughs> bombing of Iraq happened in 1922. I mean, mm. so we have been attempting with violence to, to reshape the Middle East or to make those people who live there do what we want rather than what they might choose to do themselves. Uh, for uh, uh, coming up on 100 years. And so I, it's just a really extraordinary thing. I got into a, 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 an argument uh, over the weekend about whether it should be illegal to be a bigot. I don't think it should be. Um, but some people would say it should be illegal to hold these kinds of views. It should not be allowed. They shouldn't right. be able to say Nazis, uh, neo-Nazis shouldn't have their marches. Hmm. And I, I don't I don't think so. You want to live in a world in which people might have more enlightened values, but you can't force them to have those enlightened values. I mean, in other words, we don't have freedom. Well, that's right. What, what kind of a terrible world? If you could control, think just bring it down to the level of love, something we hold most dear, right? That <laughs> is uh, <laughs> uh, not, not the old rake. Uh, the um, is is what if you could force somebody to love you? Would would love make any sense at all? Would that be love? No, of course not. And so I think it's the same thing with this: is that yeah, Islamic extremism exists, we can think about what makes it uh, 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 give, gives it more power and what diminishes its power, and we can think about how, how Americans ought to behave, or a country ought to behave, but I don't think we should. it should be outlawed. No, I don't know. Uh, you can't actually go kill people you don't like, but if you just say, I'm a bigot and I hate these people, then I just think that's the price of freedom, unfortunately. Well, you know, the word extremist, I think, is the the operative word here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe we're not talking about Christian extremism, but Mm -hmm. it's sort of it's the same thing in that it gives us a slanted perspective of that particular religious group as if suddenly, you know, it all gets generalized that they're Mm -hmm. all that way. And um it's not necessarily true for Christians, mm-hmm. certainly. There's plenty of Christians that are beautiful and loving and caring and giving. Uh, but there are extremist Christians as well who mm-hmm. want to control, you know, America right now, who want to get people on the same page with their values and beliefs. And 
I keep thinking, what happened to separation of church and state? You know, they're not mm-hmm. cutting mm-hmm. people's heads off, though, if they don't agree not with yet. you. Not mm-hmm. yet. Well, it's a utopianism. Uh, they have in the past. You know, no, we there's, hang here. <laughs> what's utopianism? That may be grim, have, grim and gruesome, but I think the outcomes are still quite as Well, but it goes powerful. to what Charles said. You can believe whatever you want to, but if you take that belief one step farther and use it uh, – with violence, then I, you cross the line. Yeah, that's against yeah. the law. And, and so I say, you know, it's essentially decriminalizing, uh, uh, having awful views. Uh, yes. Uh, and actually, they aren't yet illegal. I think hate crime laws are a disaster. I think banning, the, uh, you know, telling people what to think is a terrible, terrible idea. Mm. Because if you believe in thought, if you believe in, that you have a good idea, you want it to be persuasive. You want somebody else to see what you see. Right. But if you had to force them to believe what you believe, well, that's not belief at all. That's not thought. So six six three eight four nine two. Let's talk about that's a good point. Well, that's yeah. One. I mean, if you, you either have freedom of speech or you don't. Uh, <laughs> and in, well, yeah, I, I, right. Let's not exercise at the saying. moment. That's what you're saying, though, right? Yes. Uh, or you just uh, don't care who. Or yes. uh, unless you're German. <laughs> yeah. Well, Germany, on it's the very, other hand. It's a very difficult know. problem, yeah. Uh, they, uh, <laughs> they banned all Nazi paraphernalia, all that stuff. You, and yes. What, but, um, what happens? It drives it underground or it drives it next door to Austria or next door to the France? The United or, States of America. Or over yeah, here. we have neo-Nazis here. Over here. Um, all those old flags, you know, they've got a new use now. The, uh, oh, what, what is They're the new use? The old use? Them? They're making dresses out of them. My Nazi dress is amazing. You see me. Founders Day in Tamales this Sunday. Nice. Anyway, uh, the um, be part of the Nazi float. It would be probably surprisingly popular. I'm a little bit worried. Uh, oh. uh, 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 Come now. Uh, anyway, anyway. Four one five six six three eight four nine two. Stop this infernal babbling, quick. Well, Call us and uh, give us your uh, thoughts and opinions, and uh, the causes, the the roots, the uh, the future, the what is what are they looking for? All those questions. You know, for me, the big question if. You, if you look at what I uh, read as a description, it's you know it's fairly gruesome as a group. But uh, what is it that uh, uh, what we call ordinary kids, uh, how they get involved and march off to Syria and become uh, mm. fighters for ISIS? What is that transformation that takes people that we <laughs> consider just normal, ordinary? Uh, they're not psychopaths. They used to say, oh, these are just a gathering no, of psychopaths, no. but it isn't. Well, I use a great but, example of somebody yeah. that that actually takes all of this uh, New Age shine seriously out here would know. Merce Eliada, who is a famous historian of, of uh, Hindu religion and yoga in particular, etc. Uh, he was a member of the a Romanian fascist party in the 1930s. He was, it was or 1920s uh, and 30s. They were called the um, Order of the Archangel St. Michael. They were one of the fascist Excellent. movements that was really specifically religious. It's an anomaly in Europe, actually. All the other fascist movements were not religious in the way that Mm -hmm. the Romanians were. Um, And he went on to the University of Chicago and famously published all these books (laughs) uh, about about Eastern uh, religion. Um, but that's an interesting point. How does somebody who's uh, very rational, whose who's actual sort of work, scholarly work of his life is about understanding and curiosity and, uh, mm-hmm. and, and scholarship, how does that person become a fascist, right? A, a, you know, an anti-Semite, xenophobe, blah, 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 blah. And Saul Bellow's last book actually deals a bit with Iliada. Um, uh, so you can, you can read that if you like, good old Saul. Um, but I, but yeah, it's what is the root of what, well, what is it that is right? I mean, what you, you were talking about really, it's young. Young men, usually some women, young women, but mostly young men, young testosterone-driven men with outrage and sexual overflow. <laughs> well, poverty. You know, they have to have a. They have to have an outlet. And uh, women think, are think completely about the, different phenomena. Well, think and, about the poverty in the culture. Though. I mean, there is apparently in the West no meaning to life except for diversion, entertainment, pleasure, etc. And it isn't enough for people. I mean, this is why religion still obtains. It's why people are still religious and still seeking religion and things. Yeah, like but that. to to go from uh, basketball in the backyard, go from Idaho and end up in Iraq, and, and very similar places a, in my experience. At a camp, learning how to uh, kill people. Kill. I mean, they have those in Coeur d'Alene. You could join the army. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a really strange thing, but I do think young people take crazy risks, and and that's yeah, uh, that's part of it. I, we wish and the would... outrage because of the discrimination against well, it's being whipped up against all Muslims or I mean, the millions of dead country, Muslims at the hands of the United the States. Yes, yeah. exactly. The bombings every day. Uh, caller, we have a caller. Hi, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? And please keep your language clean. Yeah, it's uh, Michelle from Nicasio. Michelle, how is it up there? 
Uh, well, I'm actually parked down by the post office in the cause. It looks, it's very smoky looking. Mm. It's like mm. there's fires out there somewhere. Uh-oh. Petaluma had fires. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's... Do you think they were jihadists? Mm. But I, I was going to say, uh, when I was in SDS, when <laughs> I was... Students for a Democratic years, Society. When I was at 20 years old, I remember idolizing and extolling on the virtues of Mao Zedong. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it took me almost two decades to realize how crazy that was once I really understood what a madman and uh, uh, disaster Mao was. Hmm. So it's not surprising to me that young kids get drawn to a movement like ISIS. I think that when you're in your late teens and early 20s, it's very easy to be disillusioned by modern society. Mm-hmm. What drew you in? What's that? What drew you in when you were young? What did you like? Oh, I was, I was, I was protesting the war, but, but along with pro- protesting the war, I thought, I, I thought that communism was a great thing. Mm. Because it, it seemed like it offered equality to everybody. And, it, and obviously I wasn't very bright or else I wouldn't have uh, believed in it quite so ardently. Mm-hmm. But I think it's very easy when you're that age to not get the whole picture and mm-hmm. to be attracted by the drama mm-hmm. and the excitement and... Um, Grandiosity. Like Right, and like I said, modern society can seem very dull and trivial, uh, particularly when you're that age. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so uh, any outlet for that energy, uh, polit- political or, uh, or something more physical, more maybe even violent? Heroic. Heroic. Uh, appeals, yeah, right. hero, yeah. There you go, heroic. Uh, I think that actually Michelle was just after Tom Hayden's girlfriend. That's my uh, particular. <laughs> what? Well, there was she was a fox. Too. She was. Um, <clears throat> there was that too. Oh, all the fellas. What, what do you mean? That's the whole point. <laughs> that was the whole point. Those are my two cents. I, 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 I all right. I, th- thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you very much for calling in. It's great. I know I know a fellow, and I wanted to tell the story and put it in the newspaper about, about uh, the exposure of COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program, and so the FBI was infiltrating all the leftist movements like the SDS and the Panthers and things like that. It was a really, really important story. It involved a break-in at a Philadelphia FBI office, and he said, well, I don't want to put that in. And I said, well, why not? It's a great story. What a great thing to do. And he said, well, the only reason I did it was because I was having an affair with a woman at the time, and she sort of said... I won't sleep with you unless you help us do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is the power of the feminine. I think it's an excellent thing. Wow. Uh, but but he, he was a little ashamed today of his motivation. Oh, dear. Yes. But it worked. Well, what do you mean it worked? Yes, yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, you know, of course. That, uh, uh, but is that a motive? I guess, the, as you said, heroism. The, the Those who die for Hera. Right, they look like a hero, yeah. Well, the root is those who die well, for Hera. Oh, for Hera. Got the guy you know, the, the American military is always talking about fighting for our freedom. Yeah. You know, and it can be really enticing to a young man who's coming of age to who's think been, that they're going to, you know, do something great. Well, right? I think it's Playing enticing. Playing video games, all this. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's enticing to women as well because, as I say, you know, people live pretty grim lives, more so. You know, if it, back in the 1950s and 60s, you could, uh, with a high school education, even without a high school education, you could go to a factory in a place like I'm from, Flint, <laughs> Michigan, get a paper application. You did not need an in. Fill out a paper application, get a job immediately, and suddenly join or have the, be able to enjoy the level of consumption yeah. of what we'll call middle class. That has been gone for 40 years. Years. Mm-hmm. And so people are very depressed. I mean, we don't see it in a wealthy place like this. We yeah, don't have contact with that kind of despair that people have. But. You know, when listening, you all bring up something that uh, uh, ISIS is really an idea, uh, first and foremost. And it's uh, promulgated by uh, a very strong uh, propaganda machine mm-hmm. uh, using uh, uh, social media for the first time. Nobody's Brilliantly. had that power. Uh, they know how to d- use it effectively. So they are actually uh, addressing this whole category 
of uh, essentially children, uh, teenagers, and uh, but they're pr- it, it's a social media. They're putting in a very attractive uh, form. Sure. Oh, oh, and you know, we all knew that this. Or pardon me, I would say Western uh, political and military leaders knew of the existence of ISIS long before. It made the television screen. What was it, that? It was Al Qaeda beginning. Well, but even even ISIS itself, the thing that the why we all talk about ISIS now is their mastery of social media. And right. when the, the the British Defense Secretary a, a year or so ago announced that Britain was going to build a huge new military base in the Middle East. Uh, because of the shocking images, not the reality, but the images mm-hmm. that we've all seen, we need to stop ISIS. So, I mean, yeah, you, ISIS YouTube anything, basically right. got the British to double down on their 100-year disaster in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what do you think about Islamic extremism, 6638492? Is there a future for it? <laughs> is there, a, well, yeah, there, there is. is. <clears throat> no, I'll give you, do that's we need a great more question. There is a future for it. They're just changing their tactics. Hmm. Yeah, they're... Uh, the idea was uh, when they say a caliphate, it, w- it was a real place they wanted to establish with courts, with with uh, systems had of government. infrastructure, yeah. They had exactly. all sorts of things. They were trading and, you know, they had rules and they were providing a structure that wasn't there. I and mean, this is why the Taliban is so popular in Afghanistan is that they yeah. were providing right. order. They are horrible. People didn't like the Taliban, but it was not warlords, Russians, Americans, all this chaos. It was they're one. Also, they're also giving social help, you know, I mean, welfare, basically, to, yeah. to the people under them, if, as long as they toe the line. Otherwise, they're beheaded. But, well, you know, Hamas does a lot of charitable giving. It's true. Yeah, yeah. And as does the PLO. Yeah. Um, th- this is a fascinating scene. Al Fatah. Al Fatah. I remember Al Fatah. <laughs> well, I mean, that sounds great. Is From that place still ago. open? Is that on Deviz? <laughs> I remember that place. Well, no, Falafel King. That's what I was thinking of. Um, the, the, oh, I feel awful. <laughs> six six oh, eight four nine two. If you feel awful, or and, <laughs> let's see, it's it's almost it is eleven thirty now. So uh, here's an important message for everyone: uh, red flag fire warning. Marin County Fire Department has issued a red flag warning for extreme fire danger in effect from 9 p.m. Thursday to 8 a.m. Saturday. Due to hot, dry, and windy conditions during that period, all residents are cautioned to practice fire safety during this period. So, yep, it's going to be toasty and windy, which is a drastic combination. This is KWMR 90.5 FM, in Point Race Station 89.9 Bolinas, 92.3 San Geronimo Valley, and we are supported by To Celebrate Life, Breast Cancer Foundation, raising funds to help underserved women and men living with breast cancer. Through its Bay Area Breast Cancer Grants program, the foundation supports nonprofits that provide direct and emergency services and believes that no one should face breast cancer alone. Information about how to get involved is available at tocelebratelife.org. O-R-G. And our programming is also brought to you by Pacific Slope Tree Cooperative, homegrown, experienced, and equipped. They've been doing tree care in the watershed since 1972. 663-1300, Pacific Slope Tree Cooperative, 663-1300. And also, we're supported by the Inverness Park Market Information at 415-663-1491 or online at InvernessParkMarket.com. And this is Let's Talk Call-In Radio. I'm joined today. My name is Paul Raffel. Perhaps you knew that. And we're joined today by Shelley Rugg. Stephen Hurwitz and Charles Schultz. Yes. And you, the caller. <coughs> Please call Please in. Please call in, won't you? Six, four, and five, six, six, three, eight, four, nine, two. Uh, give us your thoughts on, uh, you know, it could be outrage. It could be, you could be, uh, uh, you could have been trained at a camp in the Maghreb desert or has and there been, returned. Like Michelle said, has there been some other part of your life that was uh, uh, similar, that attracted you, uh, 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 Simonese Liberation Army. Uh, Patty uh, Hearst, call in. I was with the Moonies for a weekend one time. Ooh, oh, Reverend Moon. How about yeah. that? So, you know, it was all about world peace. It is, isn't it? Right? P-I-E-C. And I was a college student in Santa Cruz, and I met some lovely people mm-hmm. in a little cafe, 
And they chatted me up and said, we're going to a seminar on world peace this weekend. Would you like to go? <laughs> that old one. That's great. So, I still use that. You know, get a lot of dates. But anyways. Uh, so I, I was there for the weekend. And then, you know, trying to make my way home and, oh, darn, the the, the van broke down. You'll have to stay another day. Yeah, and I so I was starting to get concern, concerned because I needed to get back to college. Mm. <laughs> and um, so what I observed was the the process they used to basically kind of break you down and, and get you out of touch with reality mm. – there's my little quotation marks around reality. Yes. Um, <laughs> by uh, constantly having someone at your side. So mm-hmm. everywhere I went, there was somebody with me. Mm-hmm. When I went to the bathroom, they were standing outside the stall door. I'm still apologizing for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to bed in the evening, they slept next to me. Mm. So... When we weren't having some kind of a really seminar, creepy. it was it was just a constant thing. When we weren't having a seminar and a discussion, uh, then we would have a conversation in between with this partner. Uh, when we had meals, we were to f- make sure someone else in our circle had food. We were not to serve ourselves. We were to serve someone else. So it was all, you know, sort of this indoctrination into a truly understanding love, what mm. it meant to be, you know, loving, right? <clears throat> and that this was the path to world peace, that if we all took care of each other mm. and were loving, that, w- that there would be world peace. And so it sounds... Good. That sounds laudable, doesn't it? Uh, but, you know, at the other end of that is um, give us all your worldly possessions <laughs> and disavow your entire yeah. family because they don't really understand what it means to love. And so, right. you know, you should stay with us and leave all of them behind and everything you know. And so, anyway, I did make it home. Um, and. It was stunning. Hmm. You know, it was stunning to step out of their vehicle and out of their space and their energy for the last moment and back into what I knew as reality. Hmm. And suddenly I just I everything seemed different. Like I I just it took me several days to Hmm. get sort of back to normal after only three days with them. Wow. I think those are pretty normal. Food was part of it, too. Normal cult. Well, do you know, tactics, you, yeah. if you make a big move from A one... lot of sugar and carbs. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, let's go. I was falling asleep in the, in, the, in the lectures because of all the sugar and carbs. You know, mm-hmm. I was like, and, and they were like nudging me to wake me up. Mm. Anyway, well, I, do, I mean, I think it's pretty normal when you when you make a big move or something like that. You have, feel all that attachment to the place that you've left and the people that you've left, and you're, you know. So I mean, it's it's using it to get your money, I guess. But it's the same the same thing we all sort of naturally feel in terms of association. With well, and it's people. it's also drawing you into a community, into a new way of thinking, and seeing you know, experiencing the world, and um, and building building your tribe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Jim Jones mm-hmm. comes to mind. Yeah, yeah the People's Temple. Sure. We're talking about Islamism and the People's <laughs> Temple. Even the, uh, <laughs> even the, um, what's it called? The Forum had the, the same kind of tactics. I mean, it wasn't. You know, we can't call it a cult. Because, oh, you mean you know, Earhart seminar training? You mean Jack Rosenberg, the, Bible what? salesman? Yeah, I, Wait pardon, a minute. Encyclopedia Wait salesman a minute. You from cannot Baltimore. Diss that guy. You, Werner Earhart. We can't diss. <laughs> really? So, okay. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> uh, so uh, this is. Let's talk. Uh, call. Give us a call. Eight six six three eight four nine two four one five six six three eight four nine two. And uh, tell us your thoughts about Islamic extremism. Where are they? What do they want? What is it that they really want? They want. You, know, you were talking about the caliphate. That's a good that they want to. They want to actually bring Islam to the world. A right. very Christian notion, if I might say. And, uh, and there's an apocalyptic. Uh, element to it. The, the mm. end of the world is on their way, so if you aren't a part of that, then uh, I don't know where you're supposed to go. Where do you go? The virgins are up there. But well, they, they have virgin shaitan, airlines. right? They have Satan, the same as... Because uh, they incorporate... It's, it's, a melange. It's, he's all, like a, he, yeah, it's a melange of, of Judeo-Christian uh, religion. Say, and uh, they got a 1,300-year late start on uh, Christianity. 
kind of similar to uh, only seven hundred. It's kind of similar to um, Mormons. Uh, Mormonism. He would, you sure. know, he was Muhammad was given the given the the laws of the prophet or laws of Allah were handed down to him personally and so this is the will of Allah everything that was written down at that time became the basis for this religion but that's a really common one, the founder of modern yoga, it's only about 100 years old he claimed it was 5,000 years old and it was uh, in a text that he found in some Maharaja's palace, but it was eaten by ants sadly before anyone else could look at the text oh, no. so brand yoga well this is interesting, why Islamism you know, uh, this is a meeting that happens in December of 1979 and and the Soviet Union, at the very highest levels, Brezhnev and Andropov and all the people around him were deciding, are we going to invade Afghanistan and topple the communist government of, of Afghanistan? Mm. And all the, by the way, all of those people who formed the communist gover- uh, government of Afghanistan studied in the United States, mostly at the University of Wisconsin and Columbia. So where did they get these crazy <laughs> ideas about freedom? Um, and uh, uh, there's one guy and- who... Were, excuse me, but they were funded, no, by the CIA. The CIA was funding them because they were fighting the Soviet Union. Well, this is late. That's the Islamists. These are the communists in the Soviet Union saying, do we invade Afghanistan in 1979? And somebody uh, uh, pipes in, who was a very senior military figure, and said, we will reestablish, this is a quote, we will reestablish the entire Eastern Islamic system against us, uh, uh, and we will lose politically in the entire world. Mm. And he's saying, don't invade, because what had happened in the Russian Revolution and the wow. Civil War, where there were huge uh, Islamist uprisings in uh, uh, the Middle Eastern uh, areas or the Muslim areas of, of, the so- of what became the Soviet Union. And he's saying, this is just going to happen again. If we invade mm. Afghanistan, we're going to create this Islamist reaction against us, and it's going to be a catastrophe. And I wonder if anybody was reading these same transcripts everyone keeps, in 2001. Everyone keeps, uh keeps talking about, you know, we're not uh, learning the lessons, the ancient lessons of Afghanistan, where no empire has ever overcome that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and today it always talking- ends up being the downfall of an empire, or, the, you know, they're severely weakened by the amount of resources that they adopt, that they devoted to trying to win Afghanistan and beat the tribe, tribal warlords into submission. Well, the funny thing is, you know, if the United States is invaded, you would have the people that would be uh, in a position of resistance would be all the most extreme people you know. I mean, when the Nazis mm-hmm. invaded France, the only people that resisted, overwhelming, you can watch The Sorrow and the Pity if you have a lot of time this afternoon, uh, you know, the only people that resisted almost exclusively were anarchists and communists. Mm-hmm. And it was a tiny mm-hmm. fraction of the population that resisted the Nazis. Mm-hmm. Uh, almost everybody else collaborated or was just indifferent, as you would say, uh, Stephen. Uh, there's, oh, well, you know, Nazis now. Uh, uh, the, um, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, so, you know, and in this case, I think it's the same thing. We repeatedly invade these... Uh, people's countries, and the most extreme elements rise to the fore to to use whatever violence to what, get rid of the invader uh, on the yeah. one hand, but yeah. also, I mean, it degenerates into these crazy uh, sort of death cults, is what ISIS is. It, it, mm. they, they are truly mad, you know, people, but mm. that's, um, uh, m- m- yeah, mad in the sense of an obsession with death. And, and uh, of course, there's Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda in the Islamic so Maghreb. Uh, Al-Muralitun, uh, also known as Al-Qaeda West Africa. Uh, Boko Haram. Yeah. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. That's mm-hmm. at Yemen, who are now currently... You remember that famous photograph of Ronald Reagan sitting in the White House with a meeting of... Osama bin Laden and another crowd there. Oh, yeah. well, George Bush, the too. The Laden family. Uh, oh, no, the Taliban visited George Bush. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking of the, the Taliban. But, yeah, the Mujahideen is a creation. The, the late Zbigniew Brzezinski, everybody said, oh, what a great statesman. That was his <laughs> idea. And it came out of the Carter administration. It didn't come out of the Reagan administration <laughs> to fund the Islamist extremists in Afghanistan. And mm-hmm. what they did and what the Saudis did with all these countries and the Egyptians did, they just emptied their prisons and sent everybody on a plane to Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. And, we paid, and we paid them and gave them weapons. Yep. And then we think, oh, bad things happen. How did that happen? I don't know. Uh, Why do they hate us? Why do they hate us? Hezbollah. ISIS. (coughs) ISIL. ISIL. Daesh. Uh, Uh, Jama Islamiya. Oh, and not to forget the Muslim Brotherhood, which is uh, the basis of all of this. Uh, It was it was styled as a as a way of bringing Muslims together, but really, Uh, what do you think? I'm confused. Really? Well, I'm confused about this because if you think about why people can't be free, or was it the the birth of all these? I don't think so. I think if, if you think about why people can't be free, you think about the tremendous power of the state, the military power of the state. Americans don't admit this, but they are rightly 
even if it's unconscious, terrified of the power of the state. And and so in Egypt, you have a situation where they have a military dictatorship for many decades. You remember um, Hillary Clinton saying Hosni Mubarak was like a family member to her? What a lovely woman. Thank goodness she's president. Uh, the, um, and, uh, you know, finally, they're able through mass demonstrations to get rid of their military dictator, uh, Hosni Mubarak. And the only authentic widespread opposition to Mubarak in Egypt for many decades have been the Muslim Brotherhood, Muslim Brotherhood who yeah, right. rise to power. And everybody says, no, this is Islamism. We have to get rid of them. Bring the military back in. And right. I, I have a real misgivings about that because, to me, the haunting thing about freedom is what do you do about all the arms that we've pumped into the world yeah. nonstop for the last hundred years? Well, so they, they seem to have dealt with it and got rid of the military dictator. But then the West sneers and says, oh, but they're Islamic. We've got to get so rid of them. So Islam is the... The new communism is that kind of no, thing. If, just, if there's a if someone wants to create an Islamic state like uh, like the Muslim Brotherhood does in, in they're all in jail now in Egypt yeah. and the uh, the Turkish government is becoming more, more Islamic. less secular. Uh, that's seen as a threat that's similar to the communist scourge back in the fifties. Would you say that's true? I would think that Egypt and, and Turkey would be very different cases. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Six six three eight four nine two to stop me from talking. <laughs> yes, Fair. please call in. I see a light. <laughs> I see, oh, gracious. Uh, the, uh, that's how this whole thing got started. Well, well I, I wonder if that's... Uh, if. That is the new crusade that we're or uh-huh. the, the same crusade all over again uh, that we're all embarked on now, right? That wherever Islam comes into government, uh, a new Islamic government, not the one, not not our friends the Saudis, who are of course wonderful people and financing, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, financing Sunni Islam wherever they go. Uh, or Wahhabism. I mean, uh, Wahhabism, a, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, this is the new thing that's uniting America now is the is the Islamic threat rather than the communist threat. That's maybe. Well, they what, wanted to recreate that. You remember the Oklahoma City bombing? The press immediately attributed it to Islamic terror. Sure. Right, and right. then it turns out to be Mr. Cornfed Army Man, right. uh, and so no, they've been trying to play this game for some time because again, how do you control people who don't believe in anything? You have control them by their fears, mm-hmm. so you create this nightmare and you mm-hmm. you 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 play that. I recommend Adam Curtis's The Power of Nightmares, which yes. you can watch on the internet. Mm-hmm. Very interesting story about the aims of neoconservatives and the aims of Islamists being very similar. You know, there's a trend now, though. I mean, it's trendy to I support. Islam, or I support the Muslims. Uh, well, that's insane. Where, <laughs> it's like you say, I like all men. I like all black. Well, that's crazy. But it has emerged. Yeah. Well, well certainly you, the, uh, the liberals are, are exactly. you, if you say anything about Islam, you are anti-Islamic. You're, you're a... What uh, a change. What a change. Because yeah. in the run-up to the war in Iraq, people like Christopher Hitchens uh, were writing books, Islam, the stupidest thing ever. And it was all about how Arabs treat women, uh, Arab mm-hmm. men treat mm-hmm. women, and how backward they were. So, you know, liberals play both sides whenever it's convenient. They, they were all willing to say, oh, oh no, we need that, to change it. They regard it. him and Bill Maher and... <clears throat> Uh, Dawkins, I throw and, in there. And uh, Sam Harris, they regard them all as uh, as terrible uh, xenophobes no. and terrible racists. And, uh, Fifteen right. years ago, it was all about, oh, yes, they treat women so terribly, yeah. we agree with you. Things need to change. But, the, but ultimately, uh, I don't care how Arab men treat Arab women. That's their problem. That's something for them to work out in their society. But it was used to win over a certain kind of liberal support in the United States for killing a million Iraqi people. And, now, and it's hideous. And Well, now they've gone the other way. We love all of Arabs. Talk about it all, which I is why so. we can't talk about it today. Six six three eight four nine two. Give us a call, Ooh. won't you? Uh, <laughs> give us your thoughts on Islamic extremism, extremism of all kinds. Let's bring it. Let's make it broader. We had cocktail Have extremism. Have you ever encountered plus, extremism in your life? Well, I mean, the thing is, I think extreme belief is very attractive. That's why people are attracted to it. And, mm. uh, and, and especially in the West, which has been running out of metaphysical steam now for about 200 years, um, it's going to be more and more attractive. I mm. mean, I think that's the, uh, uh, you, you, you know, you could even say that that's developing uh, on many sides. Uh, you know, the, the accounts of the sort of anti-fascist protesters in Berkeley that's hit, been in the press has been, wow, these people are really nuts. Um, that's a whole nother subject. Subject if you want to talk about... Uh, they both wear black outfits. Yeah. Um, Antifa. <laughs> well, I don't but, know. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about the tactics of Islamic extremism. So they, they're pointing out that we, are, we, the West, are bombing everywhere they are. We have now an active uh, 
building hatred of everything Islam in you in the United States. Our society is corrupt. It's, Our society, uh, yeah, we're right. corrupt. Uh, we charge interest on everything, which is something that's anathema. And I believe uh, we uh, wish we had an Islamic bank here I believe in West Marin. Falafel King is closed. Falafel King uh, is closed. And, uh, and uh, they're pointing that out, and they're also, as you pointed out in your little blurb that you sent to me, Stephen, that uh, the uh, they're um, making all Muslims in the West hunker down in community yes, they're, because they're they're being discriminated right. against. What do you do about that? You stay with the people that support the way you want to live. Even if it's just having a nice time, having a, a good American life with your kid, you just happen to be Muslim, you're hunkering down, you're separating yourself maybe from the outside, and that's how people get radicalized, right? Um, hello, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? Hi, this is Martine. And Martine, Polina. hello. Keep it clean, Martine. Hey. Keep it clean, Martine. There you go. Uh, I'm just back from... Uh, Code Pink Peace Camp, which was huh. fabulous. Excellent. And I totally recommend if you get to go, it's really a good chance to learn and get inspired. And Medea Benjamin was there, and I found out about her new book, or I don't know how new it is, but a book on Saudi Arabia hmm. uh, called Kingdom of the Unjust. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, she pointed out that they've never had an election there, and um, they're killing, I guess it's up to about 10,000 civilians in Yemen now with the weapons provided by the oh, U.S. Yes. military-industrial complex. Anyway, a good um, way to learn stuff. She's an amazing person, mm -hmm. and it's um, I think it's on topic. So, Kingdom of the Unjust by Medea Benjamin. Mm -hmm. There you go. You know, I, I mean, I, I don't like Medea as, as much as her, who is her friend. She has a beautiful place up in the ridge above uh, Bodega Bay. Who am I thinking of? Uh, married to Max Pilevsky. Uh What was mm. her name? Anyway. No, uh, anyway, I can't think of her name either. But uh, Charles, if you can't say something good about people, don't say anything at all. And Thumper's <laughs> mother is here. Yes, Bambi. That'll help. Um, how many people converted to anyway, ISIS what, what because of Bambi? Say? Oh, I was, I was going to say that, that, you know, we don't deal with our own problems. Uh, and it's true. It's brave for Medea to take a stance against Saudi Arabia because they're our closest ally in the Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, with the possible exception of Israel. Uh, so I think that is brave. On the other hand, you is know. Is our caller still here, by the way? Yes, I'm, Martine I'm right is still here. Like, I don't want to drown her out. Martine? No. Oh, no. I, I just wanted to put that in. One, one more little point that she makes is they don't, they don't put their atrocities on YouTube the way ISIS does. Hmm. But um, it's still <coughs> perpetuating, perpetrating uh, pretty nasty things. And yeah, Sharia law. I mean, that's the the yeah. great calling cry of the of the right wing nationalists here is oh Sharia law. They want to bring Sharia law. Well, Sharia law is a boy. It's a brutal. It's like nasty Puritans. Law. Yeah, and the Puritanism. irony is the people yeah, that are exactly. uh, Puritan. Uh, Very good. Very well, good. I mean, the irony is that there's there are two basic strains of American religiosity: the Puritans, who are utopians and think if you could just control people, then you can create heaven on earth, mm -hmm. and the other strain, although they go off the rails, obviously too, is the Quakers, which represents free assembly, uh, equality of women, uh, uh, all pacifism, all of the things that we idealize. But the people who would say uh, they're not going to have Sharia law here are the Puritans. They want mm -hmm. to to have I they don't want, know. They want Christian Sharia. They want yeah, that's right. Whatever yeah, that there are some misconception about that. I, I, I don't want you shouldn't sit here and just condemn Sharia law just no, in, no, 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 in, no. in one it's, broad. Well, I'm not condemning it. I don't you know it's, whatever. I mean, it does uh, in it's more complex. It does than things that. that are that are not the way we would do things. But then what? Who are we to say? It Have you it's more complex? Brutal. That's all. It's brutal. It's well, it can be brutal, yeah, but it's also uh, community. Uh, there's they're, community they're set, no, well, no, I'm they're setting up an alternative it's all set community. Up, yeah. Don't talk over Martine, Steve. Martine, no, I, I, I'm listening. I'm listening. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good at interrupting. So all right, uh, uh, Stephen, please. Do, do, do gestures count, uh, <laughs> Stephen? Carry on. Yeah, oh, no, I, I, I mean, I, like out. all law, legal systems, it's it's a community thing. It's a societal thing. It's just well, something. Well, that's well, what I'm saying is this: thirteen percent oh. of uh, of uh, British-born uh, uh, citizens uh, would favor some kind of Sharia law. Yeah. Thirteen uh, percent. That's you know what when you say Sharia law, what are they thinking? Okay, when they hmm. think about Sharia law, I don't think they're thinking about. 
uh, hands you know, being chopped off, or yeah, or just stoning. keeping all the women uh, in at home. Uh, Fifteen girls killed for refusing because they wouldn't allow them to flee a burning building because they didn't have their abayas handy mm. enough. In England, no, oh. in in the Saudi Arabia. Oh mm. wow. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's our problem. I mean, the reason that Saudi Arabia is so important is because of American imperialism and because of American desire for the oil. The Brits started it. Well, the, and we can blame the Brits. He just tried Lawrence to Lawrence of Arabia. That's what right. a hero. Uh, T. Lawrence, lovely, lovely man. Um, the <laughs> yeah, <they're laughs> no prisoners. Shocking, Martin. But the the real problem is in any specific country or religion is the consciousness that mm. is perpetuated that thinks that we can make things better by punishing people, and that just isn't true. But that's an that's yeah. an American ideal, right? I mean, so well, to me, it's, it's like Christian. It's Christian. It's very you know, Christian. It's it's what I don't think so. The, the 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 ruining of what so called Jesus brought. They took the, they took that, and then Paul and his cohorts shifted it and changed it back to this enormously you know, re- horrible vision of a perpetuating revenge and so forth, which mm. wasn't in the original doctrine. But that's the consciousness, is that you you got to punish people to make them behave, and, and it's mm. still very prevalent in our country today. And Paul yeah. had never met Jesus, and yet he established religion. Yeah, and a light shone down from heaven and a voice cried out, Paul, Paul, why the persecutors me? Paul, Saul, rather, actually, at that point. Saul, Saul. Uh, uh, Saul, yeah. Saul, thank you. But, uh, I, you know, I think, that, I think that's right, but the desire to punish, yeah, is very deep in our culture. If anybody feels that they have the right to scold you, oh, they, it's, I mean, the, the jouissance, I don't know, the, the pleasure they derive from that is just extraordinary. Anyway. Uh, thank but, you. I'll hang up. Bye. Thank, thank you, Martin. Thanks for calling. Much. Um... Uh, hmm. Oh, I had a great point to make. It's gone now. Uh, but um, stop and listen to me. Extremism. Let's Extreme. see. There was something there. Uh, oh, oh in defense of liberty is no vice. So is that where you're going to go? Uh, anyway, uh, so Sharia law. Oh, it was. I know what it was. It was just a recollection of when I was in Saudi. Oh, uh, well, I mean, Steve. Have at you which in- point they were taking technology into the law and uh, backing up dump trucks full of rocks if it was not a particular. Particularly, uh, if it wasn't a really famous person being stoned to death, they just got dump trucks and poured just rocks. Just dumped them on. T- yeah. Well, that's uh, the it's Old very Testament. Effect, uh, very effective. The, the Old Testament <laughs> it uh, seemed to favor that form of punishment. Well, exactly. You, so it, it's all you know, it, Abrahamic, the, them, but, the Old Testament, New Testament. It's all part of what Islam is, right? Yeah, but that's what the radicalism, what it is, is to fight against materni- modernity. Uh, mm. uh, uh, we have a whole lot of that out here. That's it's true. Fight against players. modernity. They want to keep a seventeenth, uh, seventh century uh, uh, lifestyle. But people, right. but people do fetishize that here. For instance, look at my flannel shirt. You can't, listeners. I mean, that's something we fetishize in the West too. But I'd say the problem is if you blame religion, you're not going to get enough of that story. There is a story about David Petraeus supposedly setting up death squads so Shia people go and kill Sunni people in northern Iraq. If you just say ISIS exists because of religion or or uh, American oh, imperialism no, no, no. exists because yeah. of Saint Paul, uh, you're not going to get there. Uh, it, it's part of the story, but it's not enough. And so I, absolutely. I just, so no, say, it's it's popularity, or it's. Uh, I think it all gets whipped out of shape. I mean, there are these few people who are doing terrible things, in uh, in giving everywhere ISIS, giving ISIS a bad name, and uh, and it's all blown out of proportion. It's a huge threat to our society. Well, really, I it's don't know. very uh, attractive. This, to th- this thing that the, that uh, video that you posted on Facebook, which was done by who knows what right wing. Yes, nationalist organization. I don't know. It was all about how uh, European and uh, and American fertility rates are dropping, but the Muslims are coming in. And I they, actually believe they that. Have, by the way. They have a fertility rate that's eight point three to compared to our one point eight, and within three generations, oh, it so will this be is American genocide. This will be <laughs> caliphate. It will be the caliphate of Europe, which is. You know. Well, that's one of the theories of the origin of the name California, by the way, is, is caliphate. It's caliph. <laughs> no, it comes from Spain, right? The, the Moorish occupation of Spain. Uh, I think it's been debunked. But, but you know, that that's a whole the different theory. subject about demographics and, and its implication about the world. But uh, uh, I, I, there is a lot to that. I, let's just not okay. make fun of it. I just think we should leave these people alone. We should, I, know, the funny thing, I think it's terrifying that the only person you can go to in American politics to say we need to get rid of all these military bases and all these foreign wars is Ron Paul. Why is that? 
I right. mean, that's that's crazy. I mean, uh, so to me, that's what happened to the anti-war movement. Yeah, leave them alone. Uh, we, yeah. If we, and if oil? we didn't need the oil, <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, it's uh, more than oil. It's it more all th- comes yeah. down to empire. riches and oil and empire. And do my go of a doll. It's about empire. Capitalism. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, thank you to our callers. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Charles. Mm. Uh, this was Let's Talk call-in radio. And uh, let me just read this again because uh, you need to know this. The Marin County Fire Fire Department has issued a red flag warning for extreme fire danger in effect from 9 p.m. Thursday tonight to 8 a.m. Saturday. Due to hot, dry, windy conditions during that period, all residents are cautioned to practice fire safety during this period. And KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. We'll be back next week with another exciting subject. Um, What? Sorry? Before everybody leaves, I I just... uh, Everybody's so grateful to have a caller, so Martine and we all, you know, we all fall over ourselves to thank her. And Michelle. Yeah, and thank you, thank you, thank you. I just want to know that when I make a comment... <laughs> thank you, Stephen. <laughs> well, I think I deserve <laughs> the same thing, same treatment. Wow. <laughs> this is a call-in show, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the important ones. Okay, everybody. Thanks day. for listening. We'll see you next week. <laughs>